participate in Spirit Day. So I feel like I will have to remember for tomorrow and for next time. But yeah, I'm doing well. And speaking of doing well, I think that uh, wellness is a great topic to start for the beginning of the year. Last week, we did talk about kind of reflecting and saying goodbye to last year. And I wanted to start this week on what wellness is and why it's so important uh, to acknowledge what your wellness level might be in different places so that you can work towards actually changing habits if you want to change them in the upcoming year. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that as well because um, you gave us a, a list of just like a, a checklist of things to think about and go back to. So I think it's a good time really at the beginning of a new year just to go back like, okay, how am I feeling in all these different categories? So I really appreciate you actually having that checklist. And then you also listed some items too, from what I remember. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when people talk about New Year's resolutions, I think that it's kind of unfair to just say, I want to do this big thing without really even examining what we have done to be successful in the past or even where your level is now. It's kind of like saying, oh, it's, you know, it's hard for me to even climb a, like a flight of stairs, but my goal is to climb to the top of Mount Everest by the end of the year. You don't want to set an impossible goal for yourself. You still want to take care of yourself and feel good about your success too. So I'm asking our students to be honest with themselves around the different areas in which they can take care of themselves, specifically around physical health, which is a big one, mental health, social health, which is our relationship to others. Like, do you have good relationships with your family and friends? And then your career health, which for our students is really, how are they doing in school? Yeah, I think that that physical part, like we've got given like maybe like simple suggestions here and there, but we haven't actually like dived deep into like, what can you do? How do you know you're doing well? Um, so I think that's a great point. Like um, examining ourselves, what what is our daily habit? What do we do in the mornings? What do we do in the afternoons, late afternoon? What do we do in the at dinner time in the evening? Like, are we laying down? Are we sitting up? Are we going out, being active? Like, what are we doing exactly to be uh, physically well and physically healthy? Um, maybe some of you guys have been measuring how many calories you have uh, been eating or maybe your body mass index, uh, body fat percentage, all those things. Or maybe you're, you've been checking your weight as well on a scale. I know it's kind of tough and it, you know, is a mental block sometimes. It's hard for me because uh, to be honest, I'm in the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life uh, this past year um, because all of my physical activities like I usually do every week with coaching, with, with my adult leagues, uh, with practice and stuff like that, with pickup games and stuff like that, that's all been taken away. So I've got to try to adjust. So it's, it's good to go back and see what, what happened. Why did it happen? Um, do I want to change? Am I happy with myself? So I think that's a great point. Yeah, with physical health, I think we talk about physical health so much. It's one of the easiest ones to, I guess, keep in, in track of. You know, like we go to the doctor's the moment we're born, we're typically we're at a hospital <laughs> for so many people. Physical health is so important and it's on our mind. It is our first basic need to have good physical health and survival and safety. And so after you've reached a certain level of physical health, um, then people can move on to emotional health, what you're talking about today and learn with Ms. Lar. I actually spoke with a number of fifth and sixth grade students about how if your physical health isn't doing very well, it can contribute to poor mental health. So if you're not sleeping, that could really create irritable, irritable mood. Or if you aren't, you know, like if you're not feeling very well about your body because you're not taking very good care of your nutrition and your exercise, it can affect your self-esteem, which is your mental health. And so we're talking about how one area of wellness, if you neglect it, it will affect other areas of your wellness. Yeah, and I think it's a good opportunity to step back and ask ourselves, what does it mean to be well? Like, 
how do we know we're at a good state of a normal state of well-being if you will or a good state of well-being what's a great state of well-being or a low state of uh, well-being so i think those are types of questions we should continually ask ourselves um yeah. so how do we measure that uh, can you elaborate a little bit more miss lar yeah, absolutely. So the physical health one is pretty interesting because a doctor can tell you very easily whether you have good physical health or maybe poor physical health. And sometimes uh, you can see it and sometimes you can't. Like just looking at me, I might not know that I actually have something wrong with my kidneys. Like you just don't know. So you can go to a doctor and they can tell you whether you're well or not. But then mental health might be harder to see because you don't see people's thoughts and feelings. You can only see their behavior. So based on how people assume their mental health, like if you're wondering whether your mental health is fair or not, you could talk to a professional in the same way you would talk to a doctor. You can talk to a counselor or a therapist and they can help you do assessments, ask questions about your health. In the same way that if your grades aren't doing so well, you can ask your teacher and say, why don't I get this? What's wrong with this specific part of the material that's hard for me to understand? I think wellness is something that you can first begin to understand whether something's wrong or not, whether it doesn't feel right, and then talk to a professional. Absolutely. And I think it's okay. Like we've always been saying, it's okay to ask for help. All of us need help, no yeah. matter who we are. Um, our orientation, our age, whatever it may be, we all need help at some point. So it's okay to ask for help. So we wanna definitely emphasize that and to reach out if, if, if you need support, essentially. And I think that's very important. Sometimes our own pride gets in the way as well, and it can. Um, sometimes our ego gets in the way. There's a lot of different excuses, but you know, if we really wanna be well, if we wanna be healthy, those are things that we have to um, get over. Mm -hmm. Like wellness is not something you achieve alone. It's actually something you need a lot of help for. Um, something today again in, in Learn with Miss Lars, we were talking about reminders for well being. Uh, you know, you don't learn how to brush your teeth from like the moment you're born. Your parents, like when you're like five, six, seven, they have to remind you, like, hey, did you brush your teeth? Did you brush your teeth? Right. <laughs> so I feel like. Those reminders are really important until you realize, oh, stop reminding me, I know. Fabulous. You start to know that it's something that you need to do to take care of yourself. We all need reminders and to be taught how to be well. And so until, until you realize like, wow, this is something I should really be doing on my own. And even then you can still ask for help. If me and you, our health game isn't that great. I can say, you know what? I need an accountability buddy. I yeah. need to go running. Mr. S, do you want to go running with me? Make sure that I wake up, make sure that we go and walk, do the extra mile. Because we all need help in trying to increase our well being. Yeah, and you brought up a great point, and I think it'd be a perfect time to talk about it too. Last week, we kind of gave you. Uh, parents and students a uh, review of like what counseling could look like, how to uh, request it and whatnot. Um, but I think uh, students and parents would like to hear what the difference is between your uh, group sessions and your office hours and what could that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So my office hours on Tuesdays from one to two is an open Zoom room in which if you are the first one to pop in, I can spend all my time talking to you. And if somebody else pops in, then I can put you in a breakout group and then we can wait until it's time to talk to somebody else. Or if you want to talk with that other person, we could do that too. But um, my office hours are kind of like if we were in person and you just wanted to say hi or ask a question, that would be the best time to do it. It's just like knock on my door, go into the Zoom room, ask me a question, talk to me a little bit, and then see if I could follow up with like Google Hangouts. Learn with Miss Lar is something that is meant to be a group with other students. So please show up feeling curious, maybe even a little uncomfortable, but at least comfortable with the idea of observing. And during Learn with Miss Lar, I meet with fifth and sixth grade students. 
and we discuss the mental health topic of the week. So today we talked about wellness because that's what our mental health topic was. And then uh, I do another group for seventh and eighth grade as well. So different times, different age groups talking about the same topic, which is the mental health topic of the week. Yeah, I think that's a great opportunity of different scenarios and settings to talk about mental health too. And um, with people that might be going through something similar or even different to have contrasting opinions and experiences, I think th that those are great to have a variety <laughs> with. Um, but I will say for group sessions, um, we do want to respect each other as well. So if you are uh, planning to attend, um, make sure you're conscious of the information some others might share. Um, it is, you know, a lot of private information that someone might be open to share about too. So uh, trying to understand and uh, respect uh, boundaries and, you know, asking questions too. Make sure you're asking questions carefully um, and a very consciously humble way to find out information about each other or about yourself. So those are things that we want to think about continually. And yeah. Um, yeah, I think that those are things that we just got to consider all the time when we talk to others. I think even today with how great group is, is, you know, in Learn With Miss Lar, when we were talking about well-being, you know, there were four other students in fifth and sixth grade. I think at one point there was five. And I asked the question, um, you know, whose mental health could be better? Do you need to, how are you doing? It's okay. Uh, I, I, there's another teacher here. I just need to step away for just a second oh, here. Sure. Yeah, you, I, you make great, great points about that. Um, uh, office hours. Can you can you kind of elaborate what the difference is? Why someone might want to go to office hours and what versus like actually getting counseling? Yeah, absolutely. So for office hours, I think that's a really good way to get help. That's not going to be very in depth. If somebody were to go to counseling with me one-on-one, -on -one, that would mean a reoccurring conversation that's going to be taking place for longer than maybe five, 10 minutes. So individual counseling, you get a half an hour with me every week versus um, you know the, the office hours is just a way to pop in and do like a check-in that lasts maybe less than 10 minutes. So I think the difference really between the two is um, the time that I can commit to a student individually. If a student just wants to say hello and ask a question, less than 10 minutes conversation, I would suggest uh, my office hours. If you want counseling, reoccurring individual sessions, that's what that would look like. Thank you, Ms. Lar. I think, yeah, some students were definitely probably curious about those things. Um, with the last few minutes, do you have some uh, suggestions of, in terms of um, maybe doing better with our well-being or trying to do some new routines and to uh, basically uh, increase our well-being physically? I have some things I might recommend that I also need to do for myself, but I want to hear from you too, I guess, first. But in terms of, oh, there we go, we're back. So um, actually next week, we're gonna be talking about habits and how to improve our habits. I think habits are how we contribute to a better sense of well-being. So like you're saying, if we want to have better physical health, there are habits that we need to do. We have to be mindful about the vegetables we're eating, mindful about the exercise that we're having. And so I really encourage students to begin thinking about their well-being by slowing down and being conscious about what they're doing and what they're choosing to do. Right now, I am choosing to talk to you over taking a nap. So, you know, like that's a choice that I'm making right now. I could choose something else, but I'm choosing to talk to you. When I am having a bag of chips, I can choose to stop or I could choose to keep going. And I know sometimes it feels like, oh, these are out of my control. But actually, the only reason it feels like it's out of our control is because we're not slowing down to make the conscious decision to do something that's better for us at the time. And so uh, well-being takes a lot of self-discipline. And that's a challenge for um, adults, for sure. But even middle schoolers, I think that's even harder to do. 
to regulate the things that we want to do, like finish a bag of chips versus slowing down and being conscious to say, I'm only going to have half. And so I'm going to ask our students to slow down, think about what they're doing, eating a bag of chips, why they're doing it. Is it because I'm hungry or because I'm bored? And then make the decision based on why they're doing it. If you're hungry, eat. If you're bored, could you be doing something else that's going to better contribute to your physical health? And so that's where we're going to start is to increase our self-awareness so that we can make better choices and better habits that are going to contribute to a better sense of well-being. Yeah, I appreciate, yeah, appreciate that. I think, I think, uh, was it echoing? No. Okay. It's doing that on my computer. It's weird. Um, I think two things come up, like in terms of like, uh, physical well-being is like the volume because maybe we notice we're eating more than we typically do. And then also the frequency, like how often am I eating or doing certain things? Like, am I laying down for more hours than I typically would or whatever, or am I doing less? Um, running or whatever physical activity than I did before. So those are two different ways to measure where we're at compared to what we were before. Um, hopefully remember what it was like in the previous year before all this went down and circumstances changed for everybody. But yeah, I, those, I think those are, you know, areas where we can kind of have a barometer of how we're doing in, in terms of our physical well-being. So uh, mm -hmm. it's being conscious of that. And like you said, I think it's, it takes a lot of willpower from our own if you need an accountability buddy, yep. it doesn't have to be like you have to be with them in particular. Maybe you want to call them on the phone while you're trying to do something or uh, FaceTiming them or whatever. Or maybe you can do it together virtually through Zoom or like Google Hangouts. Those are things that um, we can definitely get creative and adapt to um, yeah. and use those tools. And there's a lot of resources that there's a lot of different, obviously, companies that are adapting to and providing resources for uh, physical well-being online. So I know a lot of my, my trainer friends are um, doing a lot of their stuff virtually. So getting equipment, it's probably the hardest part, but yeah. uh, it's definitely doable. We can find substitutions or replacements, whether it's like household items or find some things at the store that they recommend that might be uh, a make way or a, you know, a substitution for it. So I think mm -hmm. it's definitely doable, but yeah, you, you make some great points. Yeah, access is definitely something that might, you know, people think that they need um, a lot of access to something to well being, you know, people might say that th there is a myth that vegetables and eating healthy is expensive. That's a really, really big myth that stops people from practicing a healthy lifestyle around nutrition. And so in actuality, like vegetables are very affordable. It's actually the cost in time. People might not want to cook when they could conveniently go out and do something else like a drive through, and that could end up hurting their physical health more later in the end. So being conscious of what these myths are, the effort we're willing to put into physical health. And if it's important to us, we will make the time. So we, we really need to become more conscious of that. And like I said, physical health is important, not, not just because of you know its own area of well-being, but if you have poor physical health, that can contribute to other areas of wellness um, deteriorating. And so we really want to be mindful of, of how we're actually, when they say being a well-rounded person, it really means taking care of your wellness in every single pocket. And so it's like, it looks like having friends, having a good job, doing a good job in school, taking care of your mental health, your physical health. I know that all sounds difficult, but if you can do well in at least like two areas, they will contribute to all of the others doing well. I think that's a pretty big point too. Like, mm -hmm. um, I know in the survey question, like, what can I do better for my well-being? And you gave us a list in the sec the question after that. It doesn't mean you have to do, you have to check every box. Some people can check every, bo every, every box and right. do from like, make the change from a couple to like most of it, if not all of it, while others may, requires some gradual change over time. So that's totally fine. It's adjusted for what you're capable of, but keep pushing yourself if you want to get out of that, that state of low well-being.
Totally, totally. So next week, I'm going to take the answers from, you know, what are some habits that students already do? I'm going to take the ones that students don't do, and I'm going to use that to create um, next week's lesson on how to pick up habits and maintain them. Because maintaining a habit until it becomes part of your daily routine is definitely difficult to do, but you can absolutely do it with support and consistency. Yeah, absolutely. And just to remind you, we just want to say that information that you put into the surveys is confidential, it's private only, goes to Miss Lara. So know that, you know, that information is not shared publicly or amongst a lot of people. Um, it goes directly to Miss Lara. And again, we always end with the note that if, if there is any support that you need, if there's any uh, one you want to talk to, whether it's Miss Lara, your teachers, or anybody outside of our, of our network, uh, we're more than welcome to help. Uh, please reach out. Don't uh, sit in a corner and you know get stuck or anything like that we definitely want to be there for everybody especially given the circumstances so we miss everybody still um, but we want to make sure you you are have a healthy good well-being yeah sounds good hope everybody takes care and we'll see you next week bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.